How to Change a Narrative, brought to you by the CIA. I have to frame this a bit for context. As you know, I try to absorb all media and movies. I especially enjoy the smart ones. Stories with very few plot holes have been my favorite for decades. With that in mind, let's take a look at a plot from some years ago. The deputy director of Central Intelligence tries to stop a crisis concerning the Middle East peace process where Palestinian and former East German terrorists conspire to bring the United States and Soviet Union into nuclear war. If you are a movie fan, you will probably recognize this as The Sum of All Fears by Tom Clancy, widely considered one of the best military and spy writers of all time. A little backstory on Tom Clancy should be mentioned here. As a young man, he was not allowed into the military because he was extremely nearsighted, so he reluctantly became an insurance agent and wrote military stories in his spare time. The first four things he wrote were Hunt for Red October, Patriot Games, Clear and Present Danger, and The Sum of All Fears, all of which became successful films and established Tom Clancy as a quality brand. If you were looking for a solid American spy thriller, he was it. And at no point did Tom Clancy paint the Soviet Union, now Russia, as the enemy. They were always the stoic rivals. Did the U.S. and USSR compete for some of the same goals? Yes, but in the end, neither side came out swinging. The closest Tom Clancy ever got to a full-on world conflict was with The Sum of All Fears. It's in the title after all, because everyone was afraid of the fight between the two biggest kids on the block. In the movie, a radical East German faction, the Nazis, tricked both sides into firing on each other by staging a Russian false flag attack on an American NFL game, destroying the stadium and killing thousands. In the end... Jack Ryan and the CIA discovered the plot and defused the situation at the last minute, of course. But the key point I want to make here is that the Russians had nothing to do with it. They might as well have been innocent bystanders. That book was written in 1991, and the movie starring Ben Affleck and Morgan Freeman was released in 2002 with the plot intact. But today, that same narrative has changed drastically, and for a very specific reason. Why? Simple. Most Americans either don't know or had forgotten that Tom Clancy died almost 10 years ago. Turns out he had cancer and a bad heart and it gave out at the relatively young age of 66. And when he passed away, his intellectual property rights were immediately sold off to the highest bidders, which is why you may not have known of his passing. Keep the product alive, and subliminally, hot sex, the creator is still alive. You see, the Tom Clancy brand has become a product-generating machine that keeps on rolling forward. There is a massive video game library, a newer movie that was not written by him, and now a television series in its third season. All they have to do is put Tom Clancy above the title and people will tune in. And I tuned in as well. I was a fan of the first four movies, and even though the Amazon series Jack Ryan is more or less a retread of the early books, it was nice to see the character back in a modern-day setting. But something about season three, which was just released, caught my attention. The story had changed, and the new narrative was so glaring I had to talk about it and call out the CIA project handlers. The Sum of All Fears villain in 2002 was a group of wealthy ex-Nazi extremists who wanted the U.S. and Soviet Union to destroy each other so they could create a new German superstate out of the ashes. Now, there are no European extremists at all. Now, there is only Russia. The new story is that Russian extremists, who long for the glory days of the USSR, are going to stage a military coup overthrowing the Russian president while simultaneously staging an American false flag attack, blowing up a small Russian city near the border, kicking off a war with the US. Russia would then re-establish the Soviet Union and, while they were at it, take over all of Europe in their never-ending quest for world domination. In addition, Russia is already at war with Ukraine in the television show, and the false flag is using a stolen American Patriot missile. And the lead female character is practically a dead ringer for the Prime Minister of Sweden, 
But in the show, she is a Czech Republic president, Alina Kovac. Remember Sweden in 2022? They were going to join NATO and Russia was pressuring them not to. Yeah, that is exactly what is going on in season three, only it's the Czech Republic, so it's not an issue. This is, by the way, what you can do when you own the rights to an intellectual property. Amazon owns the television rights to the character Jack Ryan and can spin any story they want with him in it. And in this case, it's somewhat ironic that the story here is being laid out by the actual CIA, who is also the lead group in the fictional series Who Saves the World. And the two narratives that subliminally hot sex you might have missed... The first is that if there is a military coup in Russia, the Americans had nothing to do with it, even though there are employee handbooks in the agency on exactly how to overthrow governments. A side note is the continuing illusion that the U.S. only overthrows small nations in tropical climates, even though privately we would like nothing more than to overthrow them all. The second and more important narrative is that if something big blows up in Russia and every bit of evidence, including the missile that did it, points to the Americans, well, we didn't do it. The Russians did it to themselves. The average viewer, and by that I mean people who do not listen to this broadcast, might not catch that that whole thing, but it is clear that making Russia the big villain is still on the table. Is this some of the finest predictive programming yet? I give it a thumbs up, yes. Time will tell as we move into 2023. Stay tuned.